Hey guys, and welcome into our Friday before Thanksgiving break edition of the Five Star News. I'm Kenneth Stafford, and I just can't wait to bring you into this action-packed show we put together for you today. And hitting leadoff for us today is our very own Cole Denton, and he has Heritage Happenings. Take it away, Cole. Hello, Generals. Happy Friday, and welcome back to Heritage Happenings. Let's get to it. Georgia Milestone's end of course exams are coming up on December 13th through the 17th with makeups on the 20th and the 21st. More information will be available on the high school website. The Heritage Greenhouse will be open on Friday, December 3rd from 3.30 to 4.30 and on Saturday, December 4th from 9 a.m. to noon. We will have nine different variants of poinsettias which were grown in the greenhouse for $8 each. Thanksgiving break is next week. We will have a story later in the show where we find out what your fellow students and teachers are doing over the break. I'm sure, I sure am thankful for the five star news and for the weather forecast. Today should be sunny with a high of 54 and a 0% chance of rain. Saturday should be cloudy with a high of 58 and a 0% chance of rain. Sunday should be cloudy with a high of 62 and a 20% chance of rain. And now on to our next segment. Thanks, Cole. And to the news now, and we'll start you off with some good news today regarding our country's policy on COVID. Superintendent Reese sent out the news yesterday. What does it mean for students and staff here at Heritage? Well, we dispatched our very own five-star news reporters, Ben Dineski and Ashley McKeon, to hallways to find out more in this report. All right, generals, uh, we are changing our COVID protocols. Uh, we, we've had a lot less cases. Uh, we seem to be through the surge. There could be other surges in the future uh, that will require us to put some of these protocols back in place. But as of now, uh, we've discontinued temperature checks. Um, we'll be able to hold uh, assemblies uh, that for, for the entire school. Um, we can fill up the theater again. Um, the big thing that I need everyone to remember is uh, to keep everyone safe, uh, to stay home if you're sick, especially if you have a fever or, or other uh, COVID-like symptoms. Um, we are seeing some, some people who have been vaccinated and still get sick and test positive. Um, so please keep that in mind um, and uh, stay home if you're sick and we won't, we won't pass it around. And also please practice good hygiene. Um, make sure you're washing your hands, covering your mouth, uh, things like that just to protect yourself and other people. Well, I heard bits and pieces of it uh, this morning on the announcements with uh, Mr. Bradford and uh, I, you know, I think it's a good thing. It's still kind of a little scary right now because a couple of students that I know have had it recently. Um, but I'm, I'm glad for a lot of reasons. First off, that it's hopefully getting out of here. We don't have to worry about it too much anymore. And I'm also glad that I don't have to wear this mask in the halls anymore. I, I think it's affecting us in a positive way because I know a lot of us have just kind of grown weary of, of the mask and the, the pull-ups, things that we're, we're wearing on our face and so forth. And um, I just know uh, it's been a long time coming to get to this point. So uh, thank goodness that hopefully we've kind of gotten over the, other, the hump with this thing and so we're good to go. And, um, but it's been a positive thing, looking forward to it. I already feel about five degrees cooler than what I used to feel. That's some really good news. Thanks Ben and Ashley and Miss Reese over at the county office. Time for a short break here on the show, but when we return, Ryan and Hayden will be here with sports. They'll recap last night's boys basketball scrimmage with LaFette, and they'll tell you about two of our senior softball players that will be playing ball at the next level. Those stories plus sports trivia next in sports. Littering hurts bad. 
Welcome back to sports, everyone. Hayden and Ryan back again with your Friday edition of sports. Yeah, Hayden, as today we'll start you off with basketball as they traveled down to Lafayette last night for the first time this year. That's right, Ryan. The boys traveled down to Lafayette to tangle with the Ramblers, who have a preseason state ranking of fourth in AAA. While it was just a scrimmage, let's just find out how they stacked up against one of the elite teams. Here's Coach Green with a recap. I went out to Lafayette for a scrimmage against them. Of course, they're uh, one of the best teams around the last few years. Been to the Elite Eight a few times. So, pretty talented. Uh, got one of the best players around in, uh, in Aiden. Um, and um, we looked like it was our first time out there uh, at a scrimmage. So, we, uh, we kind of struggled a little bit uh, with our execution. All right. We took on Lafayette last night in a scrimmage. Um, we played pretty good, I thought. We played hard. We just got to get some stuff together. We just got our football back Monday. So we just got to get in sync with everything. But overall, I thought we had a pretty good game. And this will really get us prepared for the season, which starts Saturday against Murray County. Uh, we had a scrimmage yesterday, and we traveled down to Lafayette. Uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty good performance. We lost by like 19, I believe. but. I feel like if we just cut out the mistakes, the turnovers, the open layups and stuff, I feel like we'll be fine. But uh, I think it really prepared us for the rest of the year. And Lafayette's one of the best teams around. And I feel like if we play good there, we can pull it off. I mean, I really think we got a good shot at region. And Again, uh, Lafayette caused a lot of that with their, their defense and their physicality. Um, but we got a lot to work on. And so it showed us uh, some of the things we need to improve upon. Um, you know, we got a good group of guys, and we're going to put it together eventually. But right now, we're just kind of learning to crawl before we can kind of take some steps and run. Hopefully, we'll be dancing pretty soon, maybe skydiving. Who knows? But right now, we're just kind of learning to crawl, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll figure it out as we go. And what a great way to start off the season, Ryan. Right, Hayden. As Lafayette will probably be the best team we play all year. But tomorrow starts off the regular season at Ridgeland. Good luck, guys. Now we're going to move on to softball, as two of our program's most prestigious players took to the theater the other day to sign that dotted line and further their career. Right, Hayden. As shortstop Zoe Wright and outfielder Riley Kokinda signed the papers to go to UTC. That's a great accomplishment, and our cameras were there to capture it all. Here's the recap. I tell you, it's my privilege uh, to uh, be the first on stage with uh, these two young ladies. They brought home three state championships and a third place state finish. They're all state players. They are great young ladies. Yeah, this is a uh, super special, especially because they are going to the same school. Um, so that kind of makes it, I think, even more bittersweet. Um, I'm sad to see them go. But um, like I've said, they have contributed so much to this program um, over the last four years. Um, they're going to be missed. It's going to be hard to replace them. But I'm super excited for what's ahead for them. And I know that they're going to do some awesome things at UTC and contribute as much to that program as they have here. It feels really good. It's always been a dream of mine to play in college and this day finally came where I just signed my life away pretty much. Um, this has been a dream like I said since I was little and just that the day is finally here is really um, good and I'm really grateful to have parents and coaches and everyone around me to support me in what I do and love. Well, I was just up there thinking like how this is just such an honor to be able to like be in this spot and have this scholarship and just to be able to go to the school and play and especially going to play with Zoe, like that's awesome. And I was just thinking about how crazy this moment is and just trying to take it all in in the feeling, so. So the way the game's changing in softball, two words, speed kills. It kills. Speed is amazing in the game, and you know, more and more speed that's added to a lineup, the more and more that lineup can do things offensively, not just hit the long ball. But you also need those people that can hit for power, but can also shoot gaps, and that can run. Offensively, they're both going to come in and swing. There is a little bit of an adjustment sometimes for anybody offensively, you know, and the type of pitches and the type of movement that you see with pitchers. But these two know how to do that. They know how to adjust. And so I have no, I have no, you know, problem seeing them going in and making an impact right away. I think I have a chance to play. I mean, I'm going to be competitive and just push through what I have to try to earn a starting spot, and I think that I can do it. Super proud of, of who they are, uh, of how they um, prepared every day at practice for how they led this team. Um, you know, I'm going to miss them, but um, I feel, you know, like a big sister, like I'm letting them, I'm not old enough to be the mom, but I feel like, you know, like a big sister, you know, letting them, I like, okay, I've, did what I need to do for four years and help them out. And then uh, I feel like, you know, they're prepared, they're ready, and um, I can't wait to see what they do. 
Congrats, ladies. Well deserved, as I know we'll be hearing plenty of news on y'all in years to come. That's right, Ryan, but now on to cheer. Coach Burkett's competition cheer squad took to Morgan County last weekend for the region tournament and only narrowly came up losing. Yeah, and they faced off against Central Carrollton, and it was only a difference of five points. That's right, but our girls get a shot at winning the state title this weekend in Macon. What will it take to win? Here's some of our girls talking about that. So this week I'm excited to head down to Macon and stay in a hotel with my team and get to perform our routine for the last time this year. Um, I think we'll do pretty good. We just have to remember all the things we've done at practices this past week and remember all the changes. And if we go out there and do what we know how to do, then we'll do pretty good. I'm very excited for this competition because I know once we get out there, we'll kill it. And what we're going to have to do to like keep it like good and everything we're gonna have to stay tight and always have positive mindsets through the whole routine and do very good and get great sleep before. <laughs> I'm very excited to go down to Macon this week. We've made a lot of changes in our routine and I think if we just use them we're in good hands. To win this competition we are just gonna have to make sure that the flyers stay tight and the bases do their job and yeah I'm excited. Good luck girls. And now on to sports trivia. Last week, Coach Green barely beat Mr. Johnson in overtime for the Braves themed show. But now Carson is back with some questions provided by Dr. Shipley. Yeah, and this week's questions are winter themed. Let's see who Coach Green's facing this week. On to Carson with a recap. All right, back now with Bobby Hunt. Uh, he has a big Thanksgiving meal that he can't wait for at lunch. But that's right, that's right. it's all over me. Whew. But we're gonna go ahead and get him before he does that. Go ahead and get what? The, we're gonna go ahead and do the questions right yeah, now. Yeah, we better because when I get full, it's, it's no, it, it's bad. All right, back now with the second best shooter in the school behind me, Austin Jones. Uh, here we go to start it off. Are you ready? You know, dang well, you're not the greatest shooter. All right, back now with uh, – he's won every one of them but one. Had a tough competition with Johnston last week, um, but came up on top. How do you feel coming into this week? Point, and now he's trying to make a run at, at the trivia. It ain't going to happen, though. And these questions, pretty tough. Good questions, really good questions Who this week. Who got them this week? Did you get Mr. Someone? Shipley – they were uh, made by Mr. Shipley, so shout out to you. All right, for the first question now, what wrestler was known as the American Dream? <laughs> A, Hulk Hogan. B, Dusty Rhodes. C, Ric Flair. Or D, Sting. <laughs> oh, man, that's right. I mean, you know, that's NWA wrestling, Georgia Championship wrestling. That's the American Dream is Dusty Rhodes, baby. All right, Probably so beat Bobby a bunch of times back in the day. That old little bang on Bobby's head. <laughs> I would go Ric Flair, but I got a feeling it's probably Hulk Hogan. All right, for the second question, how many no, – no, I've got to change that. I'm going to have to go with uh, Ric Flair. <laughs> All right, for the first question, what wrestler was known as the American Dream? Dusty Rose. <laughs> for the second – Look, hey, time out. <laughs> Baby, you, we – you're that good when you answer them as fast as he throws them out. Uh, get you some of that. All right, for the second question, how many NBA titles did Larry Bird win? Oh, my God. A, one. <laughs> more than B, that. two. More than that. C, three. Or D, four. Well, he won a lot of them that the Hawks should have won. I mean, he took a lot of them away from the Hawks. He's one of a long list of guys I just can't stand. Uh, but I think he – I think they won four. four. I'm going to have to go with the highest one. It'd be four. All right. For the third question now, this is the hardest question on here. Um, personally, me, I don't think I've ever been stunned on any of these questions. I've known them off the top of my head. Yeah. But this one right here, I had to think a little bit. Still got it right. But anyway, here's the question. What's the name of the 2021 Olympic breaststroke gold medalist who is currently finishing her senior year of high school in Alaska? 
A, Janet Evans. No. B, Lydia Jacoby. Maybe. C, Emma McKeon. Or D, Molly Siddle. And after that, do I have to name all the passengers that died on the Titanic or what? I mean, I mean, come on, Shipley. I mean, really? Uh, I know it's not A, so that gives me B, C, or D. Back in the day when I took the SAT, they said go with C if you don't know it. So I'm going with C. Janet. You're going with Janet? All right. I'm going to have to go with B. All right. For the bonus question now. Bonus. What legendary women's basketball coach led Tennessee to eight national titles? Oh, come on. There's no, there's no, like, so no. Uh, I don't think it was Eddie Bryant. He was at Chattanooga State. I think it was Pat Summit. Do you know this? Girls basketball. If you don't got a guess. I know who it is, but I cannot remember his name. His name? All right. I'll end it then. Okay. No name. There's no uh, multiple choice on this one. It's, it's, I know her name. I, I know her name. Let me see. Let me see. Pat. Pat. See, I know her. Summit. Pat Summit. Pat Summit. Man, I have. I, woo. See, I, I, that's how my mind works. But I, that's how my mind works. I know at the top of my mind. But it takes me a little while. See, that's when you got mind like this. It's on the track. And he's got to get caught up to the rest of it in front. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back now with Bobby Hunt. Woo. Second win of the season right now. Uh, how does that make you feel? Man, that makes me feel great. Anytime you beat Coach Green at any sign, man. I studied hard. I got them right. But now we're getting the thing coming back. Every time I win now, it's like, oh, there might be somebody uh, giving you the answer. Nope. Anybody can guess. Yes, and the answers were given by Shipley. Great questions, hard. And anyway, we'll have Hunter Johnston back next week to give up the comp- get the competition up a little bit. But we'll be back next time. Thank you. Thanks for sports, you guys. Wow, that was a lot of meat and potatoes, as Coach Green would say. We here at the show wanted to find out what some of y'all enjoy about the holiday. Stuff like what's your favorite food on Thanksgiving? What are you going to be doing over the break? What's the one of your family's traditions? Well, you know, stuff like that. Here's five-star news reporters, Corbin Seabolt, Cole Denton, and Noah Crittenton. So, uh, what I plan to do, um, do some work around the house, maybe go for a few hikes in the woods, and then uh, spend some time with family eating as much as I possibly can hold. I love this time of year. Um, I like the, uh, hopefully it'll be a pretty simple week, not really hectic. Um, and uh, we can just enjoy being together and uh, have some good food. I'm going to Universal Studios. I'm going to Ohio. Um, I'm going to ride lots of rides, and I'm going to probably cry because I'm going to see Harry Potter and stuff. I'm going to eat food at Thanksgiving. (laughs) Uh, Thanksgiving's my my favorite holiday. I like to eat. I like to watch football. I like to be around my family. So you can roll that all into one, and we all get together and and have a good time. We're pretty close-knit family, so it's going to be awesome. I love it. Having all the time off is pretty cool, but we're going to be involved with basketball here at the school. Uh, Coach Terry and myself and Coach Hyatt will be with the the varsity over at uh, Ridgeland. We're playing in their Thanksgiving tournament. We've done it since I've been coaching. It's a good tournament. It's a good chance for our team to see how we stack up against some teams that we don't play in the regular season. So that'll be fun. So I'll be at home, get some family time, but also get to be able to hang out with the basketball team, which is always a good time. And, you know, turkey, dressing, football, family. That's awesome. So my family is going to Hilton Head Island in, uh, well, it's, it's, they say it's an island, but it's really, it's just this nice place that over in South Carolina, there's a Disney resort there, Disney's Hilton Head Resort, we're going to be staying there, it's really nice, it's uh, nice and quiet, we get to ride bikes all over the place and go to the beach and uh, eat some good food, enjoy the restaurants, enjoy the view, enjoy all of it, it's, it's a nice relaxing getaway. And uh, we're going to be coming back on, hopefully on Thanksgiving Day, and we'll make it back just in time for Thanksgiving dinner with the grandparents. It's a fun little, well, semi-tradition. We've done it a few times, but not like yearly, especially after 2020. Uh, We've had some fun memories there. I can't wait to do it again. Uh, I love turkey. Um, Can't get enough. Um, I only eat it really this time of year, so I plan to eat as much 
as I can hold and just really try to set a record. How much can I hold? See how much that, that actually is. I don't know. I like, I like the dressing for some reason. My wife makes a really good dressing, and, uh, you know, I eat all of it. We had kind of a little sample of it uh, the other day here at school with, the, with our pig out for teachers, and I had two big plates. Uh, I, did, I stayed away from the dessert, though. I'm not a big sugar guy, although I look like I am, but two big plates, and they had everything. But the dressing is really what I like from my family. We, it's been a tradition uh, going all the way back to my mom and my grandmother, and now Stephanie, my wife, she, she does an awesome dressing. So that's really what I like the most. That's a that's a hard question. Probably green bean casserole, really. I think. Mashed potatoes. And the ham. I like ham better than turkey. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Thanksgiving food has to be just the classic turkey or mac and cheese, one of the two. My, my grandparents have always been good at fixing mac and cheese, and I, I just love it. And turkey, I mean, you got to love turkey, you know, just a turkey leg or just any other part of the turkey. It's good. And I, I just, I just love Thanksgiving in general and, you know, watching the parade. Probably whenever, uh, before Thanksgiving dinner, when we go outside as a family and we just play, like, baseball and stuff. When my sister was two, she ate all the pumpkin pie before dinner. <laughs> two? <laughs> Good stuff right there for sure. And with that, we're going to wrap up this Friday edition of the Five Star News. We'll take a week off, and then Ben will rejoin us on Tuesday with yet another edition of the Five Star News. But until then, have a great holiday break, everyone, and stay classy, Heritage.